Hello horror fans, I'm Dr. Udru. In this video, I'm looking at Universal's 1954 monster movie classic, The Creature from the Black Lagoon. So put on your fins and let's dive in. Creature from the Black Lagoon begins with a bang, but quickly devolves into a monotonous discourse on evolution. Living things appear and change and reach the land. From there, we head to the Amazon, where a geological expedition has unearthed the fossil of a web-fingered hand. Back at his institute, the head of the expedition, Dr. Carl Maya, shares his findings with his former student, Dr. David Reed, and Reed's boss, Dr. Mark Williams. The pair, along with Reed's girlfriend and Jennifer Connelly lookalike, Kay Lawrence, accompany Maya back to the Amazon. There, the group discovers someone has pulled a Jason Voorhees on the expedition's camp. After coming up empty-handed, the team looked for the owner of the fossilized arm in the nearby Black Lagoon. There, a humanoid amphibian quickly develops those Shape of Water feels for Jennifer Connolly. However, the rest of the team doesn't take kindly to the creature's advances and quickly formulate a plan to roofie him. Wait, what? The genesis of Creature from the Black Lagoon began with actor William Milland, a member of Orson Welles' Mercury Players, most famous for the back of his head. At a dinner party during the filming of Citizen Kane in 1941, Mexican cinematographer Gabriel Figueroa told a land about a supposedly real Amazonian fish man he had a photograph of. Of course, Figueroa didn't have it with him at the time. I am never going to see a merman. Ever. Ten years later, Land wrote story notes under the title The Sea Monster, which were then turned into a treatment by Maurice Zim. By 1953, a script titled Black Lagoon was written by Arthur Ross, and later revised by Harry Essex. Having read Jacques Cousteau's The Silent World, Ross made the script's scientists into heroes, contrasting them from the mad scientists seen in previous horror pictures. Now a producer, Land hired director Jack Arnold, who he had previously collaborated with a year earlier on It Came From Outer Space. Photography of Creature's watertop scenes took place at Universal's Park Lake, as evidenced by this movie bombing telephone pole. Meanwhile, Creature's underwater segments were directed by second unit director James C. Havens and shot at Wakala Springs, Florida. Like It Came From Outer Space, Creature from the Black Lagoon was filmed in polarized 3D. The polarized process involved shooting two images, one for each eye. Both images are then simultaneously projected through two differently polarized filters. The lenses of 3D glasses are similarly polarized, causing each eye to receive images from slightly different angles, giving the illusion of depth. For the numerous underwater sequences, a special waterproof rig was created, housing two small Aeriflex cameras. Creature was also originally intended to be filmed in color, but wasn't due to the double cost of shooting in 3D. The role of the Gill Man was originally offered to 6'5 Frankenstein portrayer Glenn Strange, who turned down the part due to his inability to swim. Ultimately, the above-water creature was played by the similarly sized Ben Chapman, with 6-foot college student Riku Browning stepping into the fins for his underwater scenes. Browning was given the role by Arnold after accompanying a land as a guide and stand-in swimmer during a filmed location scout. Even stuntman Ted White, better known for playing Jason Voorhees in Friday the 13th The Final Chapter, is said to have played the creature in some scenes. Similarly, while Kay was played by Julie Adams on land, model and stuntwoman Ginger Stanley took over the role for her swimming scenes, and for Creature's leading man, Jack Arnold brought aboard the star of his previous film, Richard Carlson. Initial designs for the creature were inspired by the Oscar statuette, and featured smooth, scaleless skin a look rumored to have been considered for a female creature in future films. Ultimately, Gilman's look was conceptualized by former Disney animator Millicent Patrick, who, despite having done a publicity tour, wasn't credited in the film. Come on, creature, your 1954 is showing. From Patrick's designs, suits were sculpted under the supervision of Universal's head of makeup and creature credit hog, Bud Westmore. Sculpted pieces were glued to a nylon bodysuit, which Chapman and Browning were then tied into. In order to move the creature's gills and throat, the suit's headpiece was equipped with hand-pumped air bladders. The visibility of the suit was so limited that Ben Chapman bumped Julie Adams' head into an artificial rock while filming. 
and in a similar fashion to the creature's suit, Kay's risque bathing suit was specially designed for the film by costume designer Rosemary O'Dell. When attacking Z, the creature was meant to pick him up and throw him towards the camera. After the wire rig holding up the actor snapped twice, director Jack Arnold decided to have Z strangled instead. Willie Milan's story notes for the film describe an unused alternate ending in which the Gilman is captured and brought back to America only to escape and kidnap Kay. Although the creature never made it out of the Amazon in his first appearance, this storyline would inform the plot of his sequel, Revenge of the Creature, finally allowing him a chance to toss a tertiary character. <laughs> This video was requested yet again by the wickedly awesome Jason LeBlanc and brought to you by the following patrons on Patreon. And I'd like to dedicate this video to the late Julie Adams, who unfortunately passed away on February 3rd. As usual, please like, comment, and subscribe, and be sure to check out my other videos.